Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt. Welcome to How to Pass the CASSP Exam with Kirk and Spock, Episode 9, where uh, Spock and Kirk are going to deal with cloud service models. Now, there's a lot of different cloud services out there. Typically, the first thing I default to is they're thinking of computing services and is it software as a service like O365 where the infrastructure and, and as well as the operating systems, the applications are all maintained by a provider and I just use their software and I, I, my users interface with a browser or something like that. Uh, platform as a service is when the provider handles all of the hardware and all the operating systems but the customer can load in their applications. And then infrastructure as a service where the uh, host provides all the hardware and a hypervisor and that allows guest operating systems meaning the the part of the OS that just deals with users and applications is maintained by the customer but there's a lot of different cloud services out there in fact any CISSP should be very familiar with identity as a service along with federated identity management very important that you understand how this is being outsourced as well um, we also have hardware as a service, we have uh, excuse me, um, storage as a service, firewall as a service, There's all kinds of things you can do as a service. But my first assumption when I see something about cloud is that they're probably talking about this and of course perhaps this. All right, so I, I use Kirk and Spock because they're my qualitative and quantitative thinkers uh, or subjective and objective. So Kirk is very subjective. Uh, he's like Ohura here is the subject playing this object. This object is a Vulcan harp. Is the music she plays good? Well, Captain Kirk will tell you that. He's very good at that. I feel this song is pretty good. Uh, but uh, it really depends on the, on the listener to the subject. That's, that's like when it's just a matter of your opinion. That's how we determine quality. Is it good quality? I can tell you what bad quality music. If it's out of tune or out of time, it's bad. It's like security. I can tell you what bad security is, but I can't tell you what good security is. It depends on the qualities you like. But this harp has four knobs on it. That's the quantity of knobs on this, and that's a fact. That's not my opinion. If you don't get that, you are quantitatively wrong. So again, we look for Spock to help us quantitatively prove at least a couple answers wrong. The, the way the exam typically works, I hear, is that you, you get a question, they don't say pick the right answer, it's pick the best answer. Now, maybe they all seem like they're right, but one is better, and you gotta remember, this is a security management test. We're not the guy that's gonna be disconnecting things, we're not gonna be the guy who has authority to fire people or terminate contracts or reconfigure anything. No, 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 we're advisors. So that's subjective right there. We have to consider that, you know, it's from the opinion of the, uh, the perspective of the particular exam, right? Okay. Uh, but quantitatively, um, sometimes you can prove a couple of answers wrong. Right? So we always let Spock take the uh, test first. And he can speak matter of factually about what he measures. Like cost is very immeasurable. That's not the same as value. Uh, he's very subjective. What's your house worth? That's not necessarily what it costs. Spock is very certain about the things that he's, uh, well, proved wrong anyway, right? You can, you can add up numbers. Um, but typically you're left over with two answers and one is just somehow better. And it could be, again, because of the perspective of a security manager or for many other reasons, I'll tell you how I would take the test. Uh, I use the term federated identity management, the Federation of Star Trek for any fans. It's like the ISO. I like to pick on the ISO because most people think that's an acronym for International Standards Organization. No, it's, it's a word. It comes from the Greek. It means equal. We've got a couple very testable ISO standards on our test and guidelines. All right, so here's our question. Spock and Kirk sit down at the test. And I always let Spock take it first. An organization wants to contract with a cloud provider. The organization would like to maintain control over guest operating systems so that OS patch management would be under their control. Which model would be most appropriate? And Spock knows that, well, first of all, uh, platform as a service? No, that's when the provider has control over the operating system, as well as some middleware. The customer has control over apps. Software as a service? No, that wouldn't work either. In fact, the, the, the provider has control over all of the computing infrastructure, right? including all applications. Hardware as a service? Boy, that's... You know, that's not very common, but it does exist. If you Google it, you'll find some providers out there. Infrastructure, that's the common one. Hmm. 
huh, gee, I wonder what they mean. So I could have OS patch management, Spoxnell DB. I would have OS patch management, but um, the I could have patch management and hardware as a service, and I could patch the device drivers too. Huh, maybe they want more. Because an infrastructure, I'd only be, and he's taken up the clock. And Kirk notices this, and Kirk says, Spock, where are we on this question? Captain, it is not A, and it is not B. Is it C or D? Explain to me how this works, Spock. Maybe I can help. So Spock explains to Captain Kirk how these most common models work. The most common models are these. Software as a service, as we said before, is when the provider provides everything in the computing infrastructure, all hardware, all operating systems, all applications. Well, then that can't work, Spock. Correct, Captain. What about this platform as a service? Well, that's when the provider provides all of the hardware, all of the operating systems, and the customer gets to load in their applications. So it wouldn't be either of these, correct? Correct, Captain. Now, what's the difference between infrastructure and hardware as a service? Well, infrastructure as a service uh, it splits the operating system in half. The part of the operating system that knows how to speak to the hardware, typically called the hypervisor or virtual machine manager, is provided by the provider. The customer provides their guest operating systems. And that just deals with users and applications. Well, it, the question, let me see the question again. It's the organization would like to maintain control over guest operating systems. So that OS patch, well, doesn't it look like infrastructure as a service is the answer? Well, not so fast, Captain. Hardware as a service, where the provider maintains all of the hardware, but the customer can load the entire operating system. So they would be able to do more of those patches. I see. And double check that question again, Spock. So that OS patch management would be under their control. And you're saying with hardware as a service, they could maintain more of the patches. Yes, but the question also said that the organization just wanted to maintain guest operating systems. Spock, you said that's much more common. I have a hunch that since this is the common body of knowledge, we should pick D. Well, Captain, they're both technically... Spock, we haven't got time. You always got to shut that logical part of your brain up that keeps bickering over. Technically, you'd have more. I can see where they're trying to trick me. You got to pick what you think is right. At a certain point, notice the clock. I uh, just had somebody recently report back that they got kicked out of the exam on 102 questions. And I said, oh, and they felt that they were doing really well. And I said, you probably were, but they ran out of time. Uh, yeah, A and B are wrong. Neither would allow the customer to maintain OS patches. Both C and D allow the customer to maintain OS patches. Now, you could argue that hardware as a service would allow the, the customer to maintain more of the patches, the device drivers. But I don't think that's what that question was asking. I think they only mentioned the guest operating system for a reason. So for me, D was a better answer because, well, for one thing, it's less expensive. Overall, I should say, it's a, that's a debatable thing. <laughs> it's, it's less expensive. Uh, it's more expensive as a contract, but it's a, uh, probably a lot more operational thing. We'll deal with that another time. All right, if, if you'd like to know more about that concept, uh, please join me in one of my live classes. I run one once a month, or you could uh, buy my pre-recorded uh, classes that have gotten some very good reviews, and I just updated that for 2019. Yay! I finally remember to click resume recording after the breaks. <laughs> My most recent class was July and I've been ruining it every month. I finally got it. All right. I also do a one-on-one -on -one practice exam review. I used to teach six-day boot camps with uh, Sean Harris. It was her program and Clement Dupuy. And I know Kelly Handerhan joined us later. I, I forget if she's done the six-day, but our pass rates were always high, higher because the six-day 
was practice exams. So I can do that one-on-one -on -one for a half day with you, and I notice my pass rates go up tremendously. So, all right. Uh, and some reviews here, and um, one of the nicest reviews, and it was really written as an email, to be fair. Kelly Handerhead, uh, great instructor. She was my PMP instructor. That's how I met her. We were both working at, at a TED school. And uh, uh, she was sending somebody my way, and she said, Larry's probably the best CSV instructor out there. I said, Kelly, can I use that in a review or something? She said, you absolutely can. So thank you so much, Kelly. I also think you touched it. All right. Thank you very much. Hope that helps some people. May you live long. Well.